coming up on Path to Zero. Replacing diesel engines with near zero emission LPG engines will reduce diesel particulate matter concentration in our surrounding communities. Welcome to Path to Zero, the podcast about clean energy and the journey toward a low carbon future. Your host is Tucker Perkins. Now, here's Tucker. In this episode of Path to Zero, we're excited to welcome the leader of one of the busiest ports on the East Coast. Jim Policcio is the CEO of Port Newark Container Terminal, which is being recognized today for its ambitious efforts to reduce emissions and decarbonize. Jim, thanks so much for hosting us and for being on Path to Zero. Tucker, thanks for having me. We're looking forward to a great day today. Uh, we're here on behalf of the Propane Education and Research Council to present an award for your investment, your company's investment, on 20 propane-powered port tractors replacing the existing diesel fleet. Tell us about how this fits into your overall plan as you think about not only cutting emissions but reducing this port's carbon footprint. The replacement of these first 20 propane near-zero emission yard tractors is an important next step for us in PNCT's decarbonization plan as we look to the future. We see the propane technology initially as a bridge to zero, uh, uh, zero emissions, terminal, uh, for our terminal equipment in the future with potential upside when renewable energy becomes readily available in this area. Uh, we see that happening sometime in the future and we're excited about the possibilities that it, that, that brings to us. Well, congratulations, it's a great first step. You know, look out the window, I've been watching uh, the equipment. This is just a massive, operation. Uh, talk to us about Port Newark Container Terminal and really what it means to this whole area, especially the economy. The port is a key link in the Atlantic Trade Network. Uh, it's a vital component of the international logistics network that serves the eastern seaboard of the United States. Uh, PNCT in the Port of New York and New Jersey is part of the second largest port complex in the U.S. We have a long-standing commitment to, envir to the environment and we move more than 20% of our ship volume through Port Newark via rail, which is significant uh, in, 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 in how our cargo moves relative to our overall carbon footprint. PNCT, from an employment standpoint, we have approximately 1,260 full-time employees. Port Newark generates 13,000 direct and indirect jobs for the surrounding communities, as well as a billion dollars in personal income. $3.2 billion in business income, and about $364 million in tax revenues. The facility itself, the physical plant, includes 307 acres. It's a four-berth operation, and berth depths are 40 to 50-foot uh, drafts. Capacity for 2 million TEUs, 20-foot uh, uh, equivalent units. Uh, we have exclusive on-dock rail operations, 8,000 feet of storage track, uh, 10,000 feet of working track, the facility operates with 13 uh, gantry cranes, uh, ship-to-shore gantry cranes, 124 straddle carriers. We're a straddle carrier operation. Uh, rubber tire gantry uh, uh, cranes in our rail yard, and a host of condition uh, of container handling equipment uh, you know, throughout the facility, including the yard hustlers that we, we spoke about earlier. We have 12 weekly deployments for ships right now. That's growing, and access to markets in North and South America, Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. Wow. And the second largest port in America in terms of containers handling. Second largest gateway. You know, we trade, we trade places with L.A. Long Beach, the port of New York and New Jersey. And so sometimes the largest port in America. Well, last year we were. Fascinating operation. You know, we'll talk about port tractors, and it's one, it's one product that I think has so many names. You call them yard hustlers. Uh, I hear people call them terminal trucks. So we'll call them port tractors. You get to call them what you want. But how important are they to this operation? And how important are they to cleaning up the air in your port? They're very much, in, at PNCT, they're very much connected to our rail operation. Terminal yard tractors, we have, you're correct, we have several names for uh, our, our equipment here. But terminal yard tractors, yard hustlers, they're essential to our rail operations. They're used to dray containers, to haul containers to and from PNCT's intermodal rail yard uh, for loading and unloading our rail cars. We have one of the region's highest percentage of containers that move via rail, which moves over, which basically takes over the road trucks off the roadways, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. 
the use of near zero emission LPG yard tractors uh, to service this portion of op our operation will have a direct impact on emissions and greenhouse gases for the communities that surround us. Yeah, that helps understand something that I was seeing that's different because when I go into most ports, I see just lines and lines of trucks and here I didn't see that. And so you're, you're heavily connected to the rail here, which is a little bit unique feature, I take it, of the port. You know, it's, it's the cargo that's moving, uh, you know, through PNCT now, uh, through the carriers that we service, but rail is it's just a critical link for us and, and will continue to be for gateways, uh, you know, on, on, on like ours on the East Coast. So these poor tractors years ago ran on diesel. You're making the migration to propane. Tell us about your logic as you were evaluating maybe propane versus electric or any other clean fuels like uh, whatever they may have been. You know, the, the, the development of ED technology for container handling equipment in the maritime industry continues to evolve. The maturity of this technology to meet the demands of our rail operations, which, which I spoke about Dre's containers over to our rail yard, we're actually moving containers over a 5% grade incline uh, to, to, to reach our rail capacity. That puts additional stress on those vehicles. The infrastructure to support EV technology hasn't completely evolved yet for us to be able to meet the needs that we have. The near zero emission LPG yard tractors developed in conjunction with MAFI and PSI, Power Solutions International and PNCT, will allow for immediate reductions in both greenhouse gases and emissions. Implementation of near zero emission LPG yard tractors can achieve even further reductions of greenhouse gases in the future when renewable becomes available, as I said earlier, for PNCT. That's really, really exciting and it's happening. It's like in our hands today, we can execute today. We want to avoid doing the unimportant beautifully. We want to be focused on results and, and this gives us immediate results. Rene renewable propane, which is a direct substitute for conventional propane, as you know, has an even lower carbon intensity than conventional propane because it's, a, it, it's produced by bio-based fuels and, and, and renewable sources. That further impacts and reduces greenhouse gas emissions. And that's the path we're leading on as we kind of catch up to what new technology might bring to us in the future. Wonderful. And I applaud, I applaud not only the research, but the ultimate decision, obviously. So you talked a little bit about metrics and quantifying. How, how do you see these propane port tractors improving the environment? It's a really, it's a great question because I believe that's where all of our focus needs to be. And, and you know, I'm proud to say that we are very much aware of that, um, the impact that, uh, that you know, we have and, and we're very much involved in understanding uh, the impacts on the local community. So, you know, for starters, the project will have a direct effect on reducing ozone concentrations in the atmosphere as well as diesel particulate matter, which as you know is very important. Now, that diesel particulate matter directly affects uh, adjacent disadvantaged communities which are located within what we call the non-attainment area. Carbon dioxide, nit nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide are all greatly reduced through the implement implementation of near zero LPG yard tractors. Our research confirms that propane trucks from this project will cut harmful NOx emissions by more than 99% when compared with the diesel vehicles currently in use. Reducing harmful impacts from emissions on local communities is the primary goal of this project. Replacing diesel engines with near zero emission LPG engines will reduce diesel particulate matter concentration in our surrounding communities. It's really an obligation. And we sometimes, you know, we sometimes forget that. It's easy for us not to forget it because as I mentioned earlier, the 1,260 employees that we have here, many of them live, work, raise their children, uh, and have grown up for generations in this area. So we, you know, we understand the importance of what we do, the privilege that we have to provide for our families uh, through, you know, the work that we do. But we also, you know, understand the, the impacts that we have to address. And if the technologies are there to help us do it, we need to be aggressive in our efforts and, and wise in our decisions on how we approach this. Well, I, I, applaud, I applaud you. We love we love to have just a little bit of fun now, and one of the things we do is use magic. We're going to hand you a magic wand, and with that magic wand, you get to use it one time 
to change one thing in the next year, so lots of ones, that you think would have the biggest impact on cleaning the environment around PNCT? Jim, how would you use that wand? I want a thousand more wishes. No. <laughs> if I could have a magic wand, I, I, I'd really like to advance, I, I wish that we could advance the development and access to renewable propane to address today's needs as well as advance the infrastructure and energy related technologies to move us more quickly uh, into our zero emissions future. We can get there. We need to be focused, we need to be committed because it goes back to your earlier question. At the end of the day, we have the privilege of working in these communities and we need to be laser focused on delivering immediate results to benefit the communities in which we serve. Wonderful use of your magic wand and I would say clearly I believe that renewable propane will follow you just from the leadership you've started here. You've created a market and I think renewable propane will come. One, one last uh, wonderful tradition we have is we are so appreciative of the time you've spent with us today. We'd like to plant a tree in a national forest in your name and in your honor, but you get to pick the forest. Is there a, is there a forest that comes to mind? We want to do something local. Um, we are in New Jersey. Morristown National Historic Park is where we are recently opening our headquarters. We like to do that. We're really, you know, very humbled by your, you know, your gesture. And what we will do is we will match uh, your, uh, your efforts at Branchburg Park in Newark, and we are going to plant a grove of uh, cherry blossom trees there. Uh, it's a joint effort between our two groups. That is wonderful. Well, our producer, Russ, uh, loves this project, and uh, that will be really uh, fun to do it, and even more fun to see your contribution to it so, as well. Thank you so much. We've talked about a lot, but what, what have I not asked you? What would you like our listeners to know about what you're doing here in Newark at the, at the terminal? Since 2013, PNCT has completed over $600 million in capital investments, uh, increasing our capacity by 80%, upgrading our entire fleet of container handling equipment, supporting both regional growth and sustainability goals that we, you know, we discussed here today. We're embarking on a second phase of our expansion now, which includes an additional rail yard, support the rail growth that we spoke about earlier, berth upgrades, we're adding a berth, and we're gonna expand our yard capacity by between five and 600,000 lifts in the existing facility. The rail expansion will double our ability to move rail uh, from this facility, much needed in the Port of New York and New Jersey, and will be a significant requirement uh, for the Port as we go forward. Our entire development strategy is planned around improved sustainability and achieving our long-term sustainability goals. We're currently exploring the integration of near-zero LPG technology in our straddle carriers, which is our prime container handling equipment at the terminal. This project is being supported by, the, uh, by PERC, in coordination with Coney Cranes and PNCT. We're very excited about the potential uh, for integrating battery energy storage systems into our electrical network to allow PNC to develop a microgrid. That's the first of its kind at, the maritime, uh, at, a, at a maritime facility. When you combine the work that we've already completed on our solar efforts, where we'll produce over 50% of our, our, our energy for this terminal at the end of this year, through renewable solar energy. Uh, we want to kind of leverage that in a battery storage integrated system that will provide us for uh, a, a microgrid, which you know, we're working very, very hard on. This is not pie in the sky stuff. We are already in the ground moving through these ideas and I, I, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that we have a chance to speak again to talk about the results of these efforts. Uh, and you know, I, I really thank you for having us today and, and, and all the help we've received uh, from not only you, but our, our partners, uh, our partners throughout, the, throughout our efforts here. Well, Jim, I don't know how to tell you how much we appreciate you allowing us to be here today and hearing your story. As I, as I listen to your story, this the one word that comes to me is leadership. That, you know, from it, it's your leadership, your team's leadership, your active involvement, and not only this port, but thinking about how this port impacts your workers, 
your community, and most, most importantly, the children around here. So thank you. I look forward to a great day in Newark today. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Path to Zero with Tucker Perkins. If you like what you've heard, subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app. You can email us with questions or comments to path to zero at propane.com. Thank you.